Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to another, I want to call this intro to C-sharp tutorial series. I don't know what we're going to call this, but in the last one, we talked about how to write a simple log or logger class where you could write to a log file whenever something occurred, or maybe you wanted to say, hey, the program got to this state. Here's some of the variables, whatever. Well, today I want to talk about exceptions because it kind of played a hand in this and I'm just going to add upon that video. So if you want to check it out, feel free to go look at my how to create a simple log writer in C-sharp. By the way, also, I'm going to link this Razor mouse that I've been using for the last six months or so. Well, actually, no, it hasn't been six months since Christmas. In the description below, if you want to go check it out, if you're in the need for a new mouse, this one is fantastic. I don't recommend things that I don't believe in or don't like. So if you want to help channel out, I do get a little kickback if you use the link and buy it. It's just a little way for me to make a little income from these videos, but don't feel obligated. And today we're going to talk about exceptions. Um, this tutorial's point actually has a really good article on different parts of exceptions, and we're going to cover it real quickly, and you can look at the syntax, but then we're going to actually program something and, and uh, do it in real life. So here are the parts you need to know. There's a try and a catch, and I call these blocks, and I think that's that's the standard of what you call them. Um, and then there's a finally block. So you can think of anything in the try block as something that you want to execute. And then if an exception occurs, which an exception is basically something wrong happened, right? Something unexpected happened, and it broke the execution of this code. Therefore, we're going to catch it and do something with it in the catch block. And then the finally block basically says, okay, whether or not an exception occurred, we're going to run this at the very end. So for example, I think they say in here, maybe in the try block, you open up a file and then you try to do something in the file and an exception occurs and you catch it. Well, in the end, you might want to still close that file because you need to close that file in case other programs have to use it. So in the finally, you would say, you know, file.close. See, so yeah, I know that was pretty quick, um, but feel free to go check out this whole article if none of what I'm saying makes sense. All right, so I'm going to return to my program from the logger, and uh, I highly recommend, I said this already, but I highly recommend you go check it out. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a method in our program class with our main method here, and we're going to call it divide. What it's going to do, it's going to take in two integers. Uh, let's just call it int a and int b. Alright, pretty simple. And actually it's not a void, it's going to return. Um, let's return a double. Okay, so it's going to return a divided by b. But we want to implement the try catch. And one of the things that can occur is, oh, what if b is 0? Right? We can't divide by 0. That will that will throw an exception for sure. So what we want to do is we want to create try and catch blocks. So let me write a catch. Okay. So anything we want to execute will go in this try block and then if an exception occurs, which we will catch, we'll put in the catch block. And catch, you actually have to follow by what kind of exception you want to catch with this block. For example, let's go back they have different types of exceptions. There's divide by zero exception. There's, you can look up all these system exception, ac application exception. But for me, I'm just going to have a general, all-encompassing exception. So what I can do is catch exception ex, and this will catch any exception, no matter what kind it is. And simply, we're going to do logger dot write log ex dot message. And that's the exception message, what occurred that caused it to fail. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to create a double, call it result. And right off the bat, we're going to make it 0. Um, but then we're going to result is going to be equal to a divided by b. I'll space it to make it look better. OK. So now we don't need this. Instead, we're going to return result. I think this makes sense. Okay, and then if we wanted to, we can implement the finally and say, no matter what, whether or not this fails or not, we want to write logger dot write log all done exclamation point. 
and I have to remember where I ended up putting this log file, ctemplog.txt. Okay, so I'm going to delete this log.txt so we get a fresh log file. I'll put it in my other screen for now. And here, what we're going to do is we're going to divide. We're going to run that method, and we're going to pass 3 and 0. And something you can do in Visual Studio, at least, you can go to Debug here, Windows, and then Exception Settings. Let me expand this a little bit. But you can see I have this enabled, this common run, common language runtime exception. So whenever an exception occurs, uh, it will stop the program and it will let me know what happens. And you will see what I mean. So let's go ahead and run this. It's going to do the divide method. right? It's going to divide 3 by 0, which will therefore raise an exception. It will throw this exception into this try block, and then we'll catch it. And we catch any exceptions. It doesn't have to just be divide by 0 exceptions. And then at the very end, whether or not an exception occurs, we will write all done. In fact, let me divide a few things. Let me do one that actually works. It doesn't throw anything. And then I will do one that does, so you can see the difference. OK. So let me put a breakpoint right here. And we can make sure it makes it through the first divide. So I'm going to start it. There we go. So we're at the first one. We're dividing 6 by 3. We're going to hit continue. You can see that went super quick. And now if I bring in my log, we can see the output all done. So it reached a finally block, but there was an exception, right? Nothing bad happened. Well, let's do it again. And here we go. I look at my log. Attempted to divide by 0. And I don't think, let me go back to my exception settings. There we go. I guess it wasn't checked. My bad. I didn't even notice. So let's start that again. And we'll run it through the first time, and then the second time. And there we go. This is what it does when it's checked. It'll halt it, and it'll tell you, oh, this was a divide by zero exception. It attempted to divide by zero. That's the message. So it, it breaks in real time here, so you can see what happens. And now if we open up our log, you can see now we have two because we ran this twice, because I forgot to enable it properly the first time. So if I wanted to, I could change this to system dot divide by zero exception, and it would catch just the divide by zero exceptions. Right, if there was something else that occurred, um, you know, if this were opening a file as well and that file already exists, who knows? It's not going to catch that because it's a different exception. So maybe you can have multiple. You can you can want it to do different things depending on the exception type, and you can totally do that. And then at the end, if you wanted to. No matter what, like I just did, you could do, if I can spell it, exception ex. And now I'd catch any remaining exceptions going on. All right, so hopefully this video makes sense. Hopefully it helps you understand and, and implement the try catch block. Really useful. Um, and help you debug if ever something occurs, which inevitably that will happen. And now you can write it to your log so when you're not paying attention to it as it's running. Uh, you can go back to your log and assess, okay, what happened? What was the exception that happened? And get an idea from there. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe and take care.